Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 22nd annual John Duncan Senior Award for Senior Advocacy Reception. We are so grateful for your presence here today. Thank you for being here. Uh, and uh, we have a pretty good program lined up today. And this is the first year we have had a third category, a business category now. So we have three honorees today, and we'll be introducing them in a few minutes. Uh, before we get started, I would like to, for any past recipient of the Duncan Award, please stand and let us recognize you. I believe it's a quiet room today. Okay. Teresa is here. Yeah, I saw Teresa. There you are. <laughs> and I know, you know, I got invited back. I've slaughtered her name last year, and I still got invited back. So it's not Senator Massey Duncan. It's Senator Becky Duncan Massey. But we're grateful for you being here today. Uh, Congressman Jimmy Duncan, we're very happy to see you here. And I saw Judge Rawson in the back a minute ago from the CAC board and a retired judge. We uh, uh, welcome you. And are there any other elected officials here today? Okay, very good. We have three recipients today. Our community recipient is Dan Hicks. Our professional recipient is Dr. Monica Crane. And our business recipient uh, is Norwood Veterinary Hospital and Dr. Joseph Tiberi. Before we get started, I would like to call your attention to the table tents and also to your program. Uh, as you know, this is a fundraiser for senior information and referral, and events like this don't happen without good sponsors. They are listed in your program. They are listed on the table tents. I do want to point a few out particularly. Our Red Ribbon sponsor is a friend of SIR, and that's a really good friend to be Red Ribbon. Uh, a Go Level sponsor is United Healthcare. The civil, silver level sponsors Hillcrest Healthcare and Alzheimer's Tennessee. The bronze level sponsor Hope Springs Adult Daycare, Leanne McDonald, Senator Becky Duncan Massey. That's twice, Becky, I got it right. Uh, food sponsor is Morning Point and Senior Living, and what a spread they've put on today. The wine pool sponsor, East Tennessee Personal Care Service. Uh, and also, thank you to all the generous individuals uh, and organizations who provided bottles of wine for the wine pool and also for the, uh, the silent auction. Uh, all of the sponsors are listed in your program and I just hope that you'll let them know how much we appreciate them if you uh, happen uh, to be in their uh, organizations or businesses, but I do want to give them a round of applause if you join me uh, for, for making this event so popular. <laughs> One of the more poignant moments that we have each year is we remember folks who won the Duncan Award in past years and unfortunately are no longer with us. And I would like to mention of the, each of those and then I'll ask for a moment of silence as we remember these people each in your own way. Uh, Helen Ash, Ben Atchley, Penny Bandy, Joy Blazer, Stan Bowling, Frankie Hicks, Jim Hicks, William Shaw, Tank Strickland, Ellen Turner, and Peggy Wirtz. If we uh, pause for a moment uh, to remember these folks. Thank you very much. We're going to flip-flop the program just a little bit, uh, and I want to introduce first Dottie Livers. Dottie is the director of the Office on Aging, and she will uh, tell us more about senior information and referral. Dottie. Thank you. Thank you, and good afternoon. How's everyone doing? All right. The rain held off today, at least this afternoon, so we're glad about that. I have the honor to share with you a little bit about the Senior Information and Referral Program. Who knows about Senior Information and Referral? Okay, all right. Well, if you don't, I'm about to tell you. The goal of our Senior Information and Referral line is really to provide one number that older adults can call to get answers that they need instead of going calling multiple places. 
They can call us and we'll connect them to different services to, depending on what their needs are. We have wonderful trained staff, and many of them are here. If you want to raise your hand, senior information and information benefits staff, I don't know, they're hanging out somewhere in the back working. Um, that basically people will call us and get information about local resources. Maybe they just need to call and find out about mobile meals or find out how to get connected to a home care agency or whatever it is will help connect the dots for them. Sometimes they don't know why they're calling and so we'll help them with that as well. So our number, just so you have it, is 546-6262. If you ever want to refer anybody to us, and I know we work with a lot of partners here in the room and connect them to you as well. Um, senior information and referral is part of the Office on Aging, and we have more than 20 programs and services that support older individuals here in Knox County and some of the programs beyond Knox County. So senior information and referral is really the first stop a lot of times people enter those programs or enter other things. Sometimes they find us in many different ways, but one way they do is through our senior service directory. There are copies on the table. Those are throughout the community, and a lot of times people find us through that. And so we're just here. It's a free service. We are here to help older adults, family members, professionals, whoever it might be, to really get the help and support that they need. Um, so thank you all for your support of Senior Information and Referral, and thank you for being here today to help honor our wonderful honorees. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Dottie. And as I mentioned, this is certainly a fundraiser for Senior Information and Referral. One of the things in your program is a QR code. Very easy to donate through your cell phone. So. Uh, please take advantage of that and support the program. Uh, I was impressed to look at the back of the program and it had not dawned on me that CAC is 60 years old this year. And then I saw the poster here and there's another one on the other end of the room. But uh, a lot of good work that CAC has done for many years and one of the people who has been instrumental in that is Barbara Kelly. And Barbara's going to come out now uh, as the, uh, the head of CAC and tell us about the history of the Duncan Award. Barbara. Well, that's right, 60 years old. <laughs> so it's really... It's really great to be here to celebrate the uh, Duncan Award for Senior Advocacy and to shine a light on the outstanding contributions of individuals being honored here this afternoon and also those who have been honored in the past. The Senior Citizens Information and Referral Service was founded in 1968 as a freestanding agency. When it became part of the Office on Aging in 2004, the Duncan Award was already in place, and it was to honor an outstanding individual. The award was later expanded to include two persons, one who advocated as a professional and the other a senior who engaged in significant community efforts. So on behalf of CAC, I want to welcome everyone who is celebrating with us today, family and friends, colleagues of the honorees, the Duncan family, volunteers, staff, CAC partners. Today's event has a special significance because, as Bill mentioned, it is part of a commemoration of 60 years anniversary for CAC. And would you believe it? That has a unique tie to the Duncan Award, and I'm going to tell you what that is. The tie to CAC 60th anniversary is this. Before John Duncan Sr. went to Congress, he served as mayor of Knoxville 
from 1959 to 1964. And one of the things he did while he was mayor was to join with Knox County Judge C. Howard Bozeman to create CAC as a city county agency to focus on poverty and on the implementation of the Economic Opportunity Act, which was passed in August of 1964. And that was followed quickly by the creation of CAC by the city and the county under the leadership of was then Mayor Duncan and County Judge C. Howard Bozeman. So a unique special tie as a city county agency focused on promoting equality and opportunity. And let's just take a minute and recognize that. John Duncan Sr. represented the second congressional, congressional district of Tennessee for Becky 20, 24 years. His reputation for excellent constituent service and for helping his friends and neighbors cut through red tape, confusing reg regulations is legendary and it is the basis for the Duncan Award. Dottie gave a little hint, but let's think back to 1964. No Office on Aging, no Information and Referral Service, no 211, no 311, no Facebook, no Internet, no focus on how people could gain access, very important word, access, how they could gain access to the limited services that were available at the time. Of course, now we have the Office on Aging focusing on digital literacy and teaching seniors how to uh, use the internet effectively. But back then, what would people do if they were having trouble getting the services that they needed. They would call the congressman's office. That was the main access point. They would call the congressman's office for help. And Congressman Duncan had an excellent staff who were able to reach out, dig in, and get the answers for people. And when I came to Knoxville, I got to know and got to work with those people on many nitty gritty, complicated issues. So the recognition of that commitment to service, especially for seniors, is what is at the heart of the Duncan Award. And I could well just stop there, but the interest of history I really need to mention just requires that I mention three other aspects of Mayor and Congressman Duncan's leadership that make this award particularly relevant to what is happening today. And there are three examples. One is the overhaul of Market Square. Now, could anyone believe that a lot of people would think that was a bad idea? Well, at the time, a lot of people thought that was a bad idea. But Mayor uh, Duncan provided the leadership. And now, can you imagine Knoxville without the Dogwood Arts Festival, without the Farmer's Market, without the countless other events that really make our community, when you think of it. Community is focused in downtown, all the things that have gone to enliven downtown. Then the second thing is in the area of economics. 
So things were changing back in the 60s, right? A lot of things were changing. But the textile mills were closed. And Mayor Duncan was one of the first people to propose a public-private partnership to promote job creation and economic development. Again, an idea that was controversial and not very popular. But if we look today, what do we see? At the heart of a vibrant downtown Knoxville are public partner, public-private partnerships. And didn't we read in the newspaper just in the last few days that now there's going to be a public-private partnership to work on the affordable housing crisis? Very relevant to today. And then, most timely, today we're seeing protests on college campuses, graduation exercises being canceled, student life being affected. It makes many of us think back to the 60s. Well, in the 60s, faced with sit-ins to protest segregated downtown lunch counters, Mayor Duncan took the lead in forming what were called goodwill committees that encouraged business to integrate their lunch counters, avoiding in Knoxville the violence that was widespread at the time. Maybe an oversimplification, but you think we could use a little of that goodwill today. So, today we have the Duncan Award named after an outstanding public servant with a special place in his heart for seniors that continues to lift up service to others, to honor people who, through their advocacy, make Knoxville and Knox County a place to age in dignity and safety with the services in place to meet the needs of a growing senior population. We have a history and a future to treasure. And thank you all for being part of it. Turn it back to you, Bill. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, Barbara. I learn something every year when you speak, and it's just amazing to hear that history. Well, now's the time, we're at the time that you all have come for, and that is to honor our three recipients this year. And uh, we will their, have their biographies read first, and then Senator Massey and the Massey, and the Duncan family, I'm gonna get it, there I go again. Uh, I know Becky you'll be up here. I don't know if anybody else from your family will or not, but you'll present the awards and, uh, and then each of the honorees will have the opportunity to speak. So first I'd like to introduce Father Thomas O'Connell, who will read the biography of Dan Hicks. Father O'Connell. Good afternoon. Many months ago, Dan asked me to be here. And so when he called last week and reminded me that today is the seventh, it was a bit of a shock. <laughs> so I suggested to him that he sent me his resume or I would improvise. <laughs> he immediately sent the resume. So when I looked at the resume, it only started in 1970s. And during the 70s, he was a 
Sterling student at Wake Forest, as well as the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville. And as I read that, I wondered if he ever dreamt in those days that he would ask a Catholic priest to be his biographer. <laughs> so how did all of this come about? Well, Dan spent, as most of you know, a very long period of ministry at Baptist Hospital. But in 2010, he suddenly found himself transplanted to St. Mary's Hospital. A few months later, I too arrived on the scene. Now I must give credit to the Sisters of Mercy who had already begun indoctrinating him <laughs> onto the mysteries of St. Mary's. And so for almost 10 years, Dan and I had offices directly across from each other. And we came to know each other very, very well. So a little bit of background on Dan's early life. Now, his credentials as a Southern Baptist are impeccable. His father is a Baptist minister and is still living, I might add. But I've always thought that if Southern Baptists were into canonizing people, they would have made a saint out of Dan's mother. <laughs> because she and her husband went as missionaries with four young boys to Taiwan, which explains why Dan graduated from ta uh, Taipei High School in Taiwan. And so with that little bit of family background, I would also have to mention that while he has been back in Tennessee, he has been married to his wife Pam and has two sons. The story somewhat ended in 2019 when St. Mary's closed. It was at that point that the Sisters of Mercy and me were basically booted. But in the remaining years, whenever there was a problem at Tanova Turkey Creek, Dan would sneak me into the building to solve a problem or two. It is unfortunate that Tanova finally decided the chaplains were useless and dismissed all of the chaplains. Not exactly a happy occasion and shame on Tanova. So at any rate, my friendship with Dan continues I've told him I will never forgive him for being his biographer, <laughs> but I am very proud to call him my best friend. Thank you, Father O'Connell. I'd like to now invite to the podium uh, Kathy Brogy. Kathy will read the biography of Dr. Monica Crane. Hi. Dr. 
Dr. Monica Crane is a fellowship-trained geriatric medicine physician who is nationally recognized as an expert in multidisciplinary dementia care. Her sole career focus has been the clinical care treatment and support for patients and families affected by Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases that cause dementia. After completing her undergraduate degree at Yale University and her medical school training at Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia, Dr. Crane went on to complete her residency and fellowship at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. During her fellowship, she was honored as a new investigator by the NIMH for her study of the behavioral symptoms due to Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Crane is a founding member of the International Society for Parental Temporal Dementias. She has received numerous clinical and research awards in the areas of Alzheimer's disease, geriatric depression, frontotemporal dementia, and end-of-life care. Dr. Crane is the founder and medical director of Genesis Neuroscience Clinic, a multidisciplinary memory disorders clinic. The, the clinic provides the latest evidence-based care for cognitive impairment and neurodegenerative dementias. Since the clinic opened in 2017, Dr. Crane has been PI for several major clinical trials in Alzheimer's disease and frontotemporal dementias, partnering with the Center for Biomedical Research at Provision Healthcare. This unique model of care incorporates support from local nonprofits, including Alzheimer's Tennessee, Alzheimer's Association, Knox County Senior Services, the Purple Cities Alliance, and the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. The Genesis Neuroscience Clinic has seen over 7,500 patients to date. As an important part of the clinic, Dr. Crane has developed an and implemented an internship program intended to inspire the next generation of clinicians to pursue a career in geriatric dementia care. In 2020, Dr. Crane founded the Tennessee Memory Disorders Foundation, which is now the parent organization for the clinic. The foundation's mission is to provide support and comprehensive community care for those with memory disorders and to mentor students and professionals to become future leaders in dementia care. And I'll tell you what, we need them. As a nonprofit, Dr. Crane has created a clinic which is able to provide services to a great many people who need care, including those with little or no insurance. Prior to 2017, Dr. Crane was the Director of Clinical Research as well as the Associate Director of Cull Neuroscience Clinic. Dr. Crane is an Assistant Professor of Medicine at UT Knoxville Graduate School of Medicine. She has served on the Board of Directors of Alzheimer's Tennessee since 2007, has been a leader in the outreach work group for the Society of Nuclear Medicine and Molecular Imaging. Dr. Crane has been recognized as a leader by the East Tennessee community, as an inductee of Liter Leadership Knoxville and the Executive Women's Association. Under her leadership, the Knoxville community started an annual frontotemporal dementia conference and a community-wide educational series with the goal of raising awareness. And then, there's the Dr. Crane, who's the teacher. Our office is full of interns. Most of them are on their way to medical school while others are heading into research. Dr. Crane will gather them and show them scans, discuss interesting cases or research. The valuable information they receive will help them change the face of healthcare. Through her guidance, countless students have learned about cognitive issues and memory disorders and have gone on to medical school. Because of Dr. Crane, the future of healthcare looks brighter. As these young people enter the field with the knowledge and resources to help people receive the care they need. Dr. Crane also works with residents as they do their clinicals in our office. These doctors leave our cl clinic with a clearer understanding of cognitive disorders. Whatever specialty they choose, they are better equipped to recognize and help their patients. In our office, Dr. Crane encourages all of us to stretch and reach for our full potential. She is always ready with a positive word and a pat on the back. Her door is always open for any of us. Whenever someone tries to compliment her, she immediately informs them it's a team effort. I'm fairly sure she's going to say that today, too. <laughs> but it is Dr. Crane who brings out the best in the rest of us. Her staff admires her, but even more, we all love her. The last seven years have been a blessing to me, and I am honored to call Dr. Monica Crane my friend. 
Thank you, Dr. Crane, for all you have done and will continue to do for our community. Thank you, Ms. Brogy. Now I'd like to invite Monica Brown uh, to the podium. She is the program manager for Knox Paws and Feed a Pet, and she will read the biography of uh, Dr. Joseph Tiberi and Norwood Veterinary Hospital. Well, I can't really compete with all of those wonderful speeches, but I am going to tell you about a wonderful man and a wonderful veterinary practice here in Knoxville. Um, I met Dr. Tiberi about 10 years ago um, when I was running the animal shelter, but I've moved on into the position at Knox Paws. And what I have found at Norwood Veterinary Clinic, um, he supports the efforts of the Knox Paws program. In the last, oh, 10 years, he's seen at least 200 of our pets in the program. He's cared for them at a very much discounted cost and sometimes even free services for those pets. Our seniors can't afford the veterinary care, so Dr. Tiberi makes sure that their pets are well cared for. Um, this discounted care goes anywhere from just vaccines on up to dental work. Um, he will do surgeries for us, he will do dental care, whatever the pet needs, he's there to make sure that they're very well taken care of. Um, he also is just brilliant at doing fun, fundraising or food drives for our programs so that we can uh, continue to provide for our clients. Um, Dr. Tiberi's got that side. He can get in into your, well, we won't say that word, but if your pet's sick, he'll let you know about it in a very blatant way. But these seniors love him for that honesty, that truth, and that trust that they have in him as, as their veterinarian. When they first announced the Business Duncan Award, I couldn't think of a better location, a better business in this town. Dr. Tiberi's been here for many years. Um, his practice has thrived, and he is a stellar veterinarian. I couldn't have thought of a better business to nominate for this first year donate, or Duncan Award than Dr. Tiberi's clinic, Norwood Veterinary Clinic. And he's also an Ohio State grad, so that makes a difference too. Thank you, Monica. Uh, and now I'd like to invite uh, Senator Becky Duncan Massey up to the podium and uh, talk about the history of the Duncan family and uh, give a tribute to the late Congressman. Becky. Thank you, Bill. And the reason he has trouble with it, he was on my board at Sertoma, and he's just used to saying Becky without all those other names added into it. But Barbara, thank you always for the, the history. It's always neat to hear about our dad. Uh, I've got, as, as you know, my brother is here, Jimmy Duncan, his beautiful wife, Vicki, and my beautiful sister, Beverly Gleason. So uh, we've got one brother that lives out of town, but uh, the rest of us are here in full-fledged. Full Although if you really want me to tell the history, we've got about 45 first cousins and, you know, but, uh, but no, Daddy actually... You know, growing up, and Jimmy can really is probably the better storyteller, but we might be here a lot longer. So, uh, but, but we were raised that, okay, we're no better than anybody else, and get out there and get to work, and to do your part. And what more than these three honorees that are here today? They're out there doing more than their part in making a difference in our community. And that, that really is what our dad embodied. It was public servants at its, at its best, basically. And you all are amazing examples of that. And it's, I don't think they could have picked anybody better for the, this award. So, you know, he, you, you respected your elders. Um, you work to do what you can. And, you know, I don't know, many of y'all know, but we, we actually 
passed a bill in the state legislature this year to have a new department. It's combined with disability, but disability and aging. Aging did not have a full department with a commissioner at the, that level. So that was a big win for our senior, seniors throughout our state. But um, it is just an honor to be here with you. Thank you all. There's so many people in here that are making a difference every day in the life of our seniors and our communities. And as we come up to present the awards, I'd like everybody to pat each other on the back because you all are all heroes in here along with our special honorees. Thank you. And now I invite our three honorees to come up, uh, Dan Hicks, uh, Dr. Tabor Taberi, and Dr. Crane. And we do have uh, resolutions passed by both the Tennessee House and the Tennessee Senate uh, to honor each of these folks too, along with their other awards. So, who's doing what? Just, what are we doing? Yes, so, yes, I uh, would like to invite each of our honorees up to speak, say a few words, so, Dan Hicks, Dr. Crane, Dr. Tiberi, if you'll come back. Uh, Father Tom was right. Uh, in the 70s, when I was uh, smarter and knew all the answers, I could not, in my wildest imagination, have seen this day and, and have a Catholic priest do my biography. A little bit overwhelmed right now. I, I was a Baptist preacher at one time, but I don't trust myself in front of an audience any longer, so I've written down some remarks. Some accounts are not meant to be settled. Wendell Berry shares that wonderful line in one of his novels, the novel Jaber Crow. Some accounts are not meant to be settled. I've come to believe it is true, convinced by surprising, by generous moments like this, reminded how hopelessly in debt I am and always will be, recipient of so much kindness from others, often from the very folks I'm trying to help. This evening, I am humbled, filled with gratitude, as I remember all of the remarkable, open-hearted people I've learned from cared for, and worked alongside of. I hope in some way my receiving this honor will honor them as well. Thank you. Thank you for this kindness. I believe if the world survives, it will survive by kindness. Some accounts are not meant to be settled. This is one of those accounts.
I'm so honored to receive this award, and I want to say thank you first to Dr. John Doherty, who could not be here today, but I walk in his footsteps. He was my teacher, and I hope to continue his legacy. And the next three people I want to thank are my amazing uh, partners. If you could stand up, Amber Taman, Sarah White, and Kathy Brogy. So they. <laughs> Over seven years ago, they all uh, left uh, well paying jobs to create a clinic from the ground up that. Uh, became the nonprofit dream that we had hoped. So thank you, and I appreciate so much community support. You. So thank you. And my family, too. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Tiberi, okay. You're going to decline. Well, it's kind of, those are kind of hard to follow those two people. And you know, Dan Hicks, I don't know of a Baptist preacher who wouldn't tell you to write your prayer down before you get to the pulpit anyway. So. <laughs> uh, again, let's a round of applause for all three of our, uh, our honorees. <laughs> Thank you all for coming again. We appreciate it. This is always a fun event. So well done. Uh, this is a beautiful setting. And uh, stick around. There's still food. Uh, there's still auction items. There's still a wine pool. Uh, also, if you didn't get a chance before the program, the guest books are on the right side before you go out the door, and be sure to sign those too. But again, thank you all for being here. We'll hold the auction open for about 10 more minutes, and then we'll close it down. Have a good day. <laughs>